In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at some of the more advanced features within my 2D texture toolpath. Now I'm going to open my Create Texture Toolpath. And I'm going to leave this showing and I'm going to firstly select a tool. Now previously we saw the effect of just selecting a ball nose tool and using the default values. Now I'm going to use a different tool. We're going to use a 100 degree V bit tool. I'm going to select this. I'm going to take a look at what the pattern, depth profile, and drive vector are, and how the values affect the way in which they work. So, just to remember by using the default values from the tool and setting up my material block to 18 millimeters and just calculating now and I'll just re-simulate this so I'm going to right click and turn on my simulation toolbar which is this one here and selecting simulate the toolpath we'll just view what our standard toolpath looks like with the set or the default values from the tool using the VBit carving tool. Now this is a very basic carved piece. I think we'll change the material on this so we can see it more clearly. So I'm going to come to 3D graphic options. I'm going to change my simulation to a satin gold finish close this down so we can see the effect better. Now that's just using the standard default values from tool. If I reset my simulation block and firstly take a look at what the pattern does. Now currently we were just using a straight line. Now if I use a selected vector come across to my 2D view here I've created a pattern. Now this pattern can be any shape, whether it's open or closed vector. Now I'm going to set this as my pattern. I'm going to make the width and the length equal to what they currently are as I've created them. So to do this, I've just pulled up the tool settings tab and my width is 40 millimeters and my height is 20 millimeters. So I want to make sure that they stay exactly the same within my design. And then I'm going to leave all the other settings exactly the same. And then I'm going to calculate this toolpath as it is. So what we can see, so we've actually created, if we simulate, this pattern across various places across our design. Now we can change how this works or how it looks. Now to me it looks slightly too deep. So I'm going to change my start depth to zero. And because we're using a V-bit tool, I don't want it to cut in too deep. And then I'm going to recalculate and then re-simulate. So it's not cutting as deep, so we get more of a scratched effect. Now we don't have many of these at the moment, so we could add more if we wanted to by changing the spacing. And the spacing's in the drive vector. So if I change my step over to five and my maximum step over to five, my spacing to five and my maximum space to five, and recalculate it, we're going to get quite an even toolpath of these scratched effects over my design. So I'll delete my simulation and re-simulate my toolpath. We can see we've now got even spacing of this effect across our design. Now it may be slightly too close. If you do want to cancel a toolpath at any point, you select the escape key. Then I'll reset my design and change this to something bigger 
such as 40 by 40 and 40 and 40 to give us that more even spacing across our design. So we can see how the step over and the spacing affect each one. Now if I change my step over to 10 and 10, leave my spacing, we will see how it affects the actual step over between this toolpath, moving up to the next part of the toolpath to give us the same pattern. Now if we wanted to vary this, this is where we change our minimum step over to one and our maximum to the other, our minimum spacing to one and our maximum spacing to the other and we'll get a more varied toolpath. If I recalculate this again, we can see how it constantly changes. Now I'm going to set this back to 40 by 40 and recalculate and we can see what our pattern looks like. Now I've set my pattern to the same width and length as what I created it. If I wanted to change this at all, I could change my actual pattern width to, for example, 60 millimeters and change the height to five millimeters and we'll get a more stretched, thinner pattern. If I do this the other way, we will get a different effect because we're changing the size of our pattern itself. So the pattern width, if you want the exact size, you have to actually create your artwork to the exact size you want it to be and find out what the width and the height of it are if you want to preserve those scales. But if you want to change these at any point, you can get a very nice effect by just changing the width and the height of the design here. You can also get them to vary. So I can get them to vary between five and 50 and for example, five and 60 and I'll get varying size and shapes of my pattern across my design. So I'm just going to simulate this so we can see the effects we've got. And we can see how this changes and how it affects. And by again coming to here and changing my different values, we can see how it will change exactly what my step over and my design looks like by changing all of these values. So that's working with the pattern tool and by using a selected vector as a pattern. Now as mentioned you can put closed or open shapes within this if you wanted to. I'm now going to go back to straight line as a pattern and I'm going to take a look at the next part which is going to be my depth profile. So I can either use a flat depth profile a recessed profile or a selected vector. I'm going to use this vector here as my depth profile. And I'm going to cut anywhere between one and eight millimeters deep. I'm going to use the default values from the tool first though and go one and eight millimeters deep. And I'll change my spacing to 40, 40, 40 and 40 just so we can see the effect we're getting. So if I now simulate this we get varying cutting depths within our work. What we will see is the varying depths in which it's now cutting at in comparison to the smooth recessed profile which it currently or previously produced. So by using that selected vector we're changing our actual profile. Now this can change or can vary depending on how you were to create that line whether you wanted it to wave up and down or whether you just wanted a very simple down and straight up depth profile which I've chosen here. I'm going to go back and use the default values from tool and recalculate. I'm going to make it cut much deeper to 
twelve and zero point five. I'm going to make the pattern length vary between fifty and one hundred and sixty millimeters. My step over, I'm going to go between ten and thirty, and ten and thirty for my spacing. And see the difference we get by changing these values. So we can see that the thinner areas have been created. We've gone constantly deep because of the pattern in which we set and how it's affected our design. Now we're going to take a look at the drive vector curve. So how our drive vector is currently a straight line, but how it also could be a selected vector. Now the best way to see this is by first of all setting a pattern. So I'm going to set this here as my selected pattern. And I'm going to make sure that this says roughly about the same size it is now at five millimeters. I'm going to select this vector here as my drive curve and my profile I'm just going to leave to the standard recessed and put in anywhere between 0.5 and 1 millimeter deep. I'm going to set all of my step overs and minimum spacing to 10 millimeters. Now if I come to the 3D view and calculate this. Okay, we can see that our curve for our drive curve, which is this swerved piece here, is what has been created here. So our stars are coming up in this angle here. So you can change how your shape works and how your shape looks to how it's being cut by changing your drive curve. So if I simulate this, we can see better how our drive curve is affecting the way in which our pattern is created. So these are the advanced features within the texture toolpath tab and how they're all affected between the pattern of what the actual shape you're using, whether the depth profile to what the profile of the cut in Z looks like or your drive curve which is how your shape or your pattern is getting transferred across your actual artwork or across the line which you've created.